Amen. All glory to God. And that's, that's exactly what he kept saying to me. All glory to God. Because we don't want to forget what God has done for us. Because that's where we get ourselves in trouble. If we start forgetting what God did, you're going to start doing what you want to do and what you think is best. And that is not what's best. God knows what's best. Did you start it? Okay. So I wasn't supposed to tell you the title of this quite yet. <laughs> because I was going to lead into it with the introduction. But as you know, this is picking up your cross. <clears throat> so while I was doing my daily activities today, I struggled to find a topic on what I was going to do a sermon on. Even today, I realize that sometimes I rely on myself for discovery of the messages that I'm supposed to give, that God wants me to give. And that's where I've become more independent and become less dependent on the cross and what God did. So I sit... And, I, and I'm thinking, like, oh, should I write about this? Should I write about that? But that's when the word pray came across my mind. And I felt it in my heart, and I was like, before I continue, I need to start praying. Because before anything that you do, you need to have pray in there. It's something that stuck out to me. This is a side note. When we went to the big ticket, there was a gentleman there. Um, I can't remember the, his name right now, but or Troy. That's his name. Pastor Troy. Um... He had a shirt on, and it was uh, hustle, pray, eat. And a lot of people would ask him, why doesn't it say pray on top? That's the first thing. And he said, because pray is in the middle of everything you do. That was huge. And that stuck to me clearly because I was able to realize that before I started doing this. So I closed my eyes and I started to pray, which led me to this message. And we forget that we can't lean on our own understanding to get those answers that we need. So we need to continue to pray, uh, myself included, with everyone else. We must remember that God expects us to talk to Him, even in the smallest of things. And I figured I'd share that uh, before continuing, because it's extremely important to show that my humanity remains. I'm not God. As well as you guys have humanity as well. To show that we are human, we need God. Our lifestyles, no matter how holy we may think we are, we need to get close to God. We can always get closer, and the closer we get, the closer He gets to you. So we must remind ourselves to pick up our cross daily as we serve Him and the Great Commission. So today's scripture reading, if you brought your Bibles, it's Luke 9, 23 through 25. Jesus spoke from 23 to 27, but we're going to cut it to 23 to 25 because that's the meat of what I'm looking at right now. And your version may be uh, a little different from mine. I pulled it from KJV. So Luke 9, 23. <laughs> yeah, Luke 9, 23. Okay. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? So... Something I like to do before we get too deep into it is we got to understand where this is coming from, where they're at in their timeline, because we have to see what else is going on. So, when was this taking place? Well, this was like the, uh, as my Bible had uh, told me, is this was the Great Confession. It may be titled differently, but this was Jesus speaking to his disciples. Uh, Luke 29. Or, sorry, Luke 9, 10 continued uh, after, after that. That was the uh, feeding of the 5,000 in Bethsaida in the desert. He was swarmed when he was shown to the city. Twelve, the 12 disciples requested that um, send everyone away, but the Lord denied it. The request because he wanted to show them who he was. And offering the five loaves and the two fish told them to have them sit in companies of 50, and uh, the Lord blessed the loaves and fishes while looking to heaven and broke them to the disciples and set them before the people. Everyone ate and was filled. So this is really awesome. 
to see that God, as Jesus, did this thing. And while there were 12 baskets left, that's a lot. <laughs> that still boggles my mind. And so, and then after that, the Luke 9, 28 continued, was Jesus spoke this before the transfiguration, spoke this to the uh, 12 at the transfiguration about eight days after the uh, great confession. Jesus took Peter, John, and James up to the mountain to pray. Uh, and as he was praying, his body, his countenance was altered. That's what it was uh, translated to, his uh, countenance. And it was altered, and his clothes changed white, and they glistened. Um, and then that's when Moses and Elias, uh, as it was translated, appeared before Jesus to speak to him, which they spoke about his death before it was to come in Jerusalem. And the people that went to him, being John, Peter, and James, they were asleep, but they were awoken by it. And this is when you see them like, oh, we must build the three tabernacles um, from now. And then God had spoke, this is my beloved son, hear him. And they told no one in those days what they had seen. So back to the, uh, the 12, uh, why was Jesus explaining this to them? Well, he was revealing to us and the 12 that at the time that something big was about to happen, and not only must we as his followers and his disciples follow these, uh, these commands, but all who wish to follow him and his work. So, to clarify that uh, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, it opened the door to salvation by grace, faith alone. Um, this was revealed in Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. To enter the way as a disciple of Christ, to take his yoke and learn from him, as the 12 did. So, it was a basis ground of, let me teach you something, this is what you need to hear before uh, the rest takes place. So, in Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, it tells us that it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And to break that down, it's not from yourselves, it's from a gift from God. And not by works so that no one can boast, but for God, you are God's handiwork. That God crafted you and has a plan for you, and that this is what he has made you to do. And that through that, Christ Jesus to do good works. So in this moment, it's saying that Jesus wants us to continue to do the good works after our faith in him has taken precedent. Okay, so with the grace and faith alone comes the doing good works. So we want to continue to do good works through him, not by us, but because of him and what he did for us. In James 2.18, it says, Show me your faith without deeds, and I'll show you my faith by my deeds. That sounds like we need to do work. It sounds like we need to do some work for Him. Not saying that by your works you are saved. So don't get that twisted. Because it is by God's... Uh, well, it is by God that we have the salvation that we need. But we want to continue to share that with others. We can't share that... We can't close it, like shine your light, so to speak. You want to shine your light. Shine that light of what you're learning. And, and a little bit later in James 2, in 2.26, it says, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. What does that mean? So we have, we should probably continue to do what Jesus laid out for us. I mean, what did he tell the disciples to do? Go out. So what does it mean? So that was an ex, uh, explanation to the twelve of what was to come, and, but also to us as to not be ashamed in Him, because I did a study not too long ago. It's actually on YouTube about Philippi and the Roman soldiers and the people over there. They were feeling they were scared. They have nothing to be scared of through Christ. That's already won. But you also have to encourage people. So that is what was happening there. Paul was trying to uh, re-encourage these gentlemen in that study. So that way they would not be ashamed of what Christ did. Of what God did for us. Because he wants us to have a relationship with him. 
Like, that's the biggest thing out of all of this, is Jesus wants to know you, and he, you want to know him. If there's a need there. We're going to get into that just a little bit um, from here. But, also to prepare those coming to serve him, to understand their position in the Great Commission. When you first get saved, it can be really, really scary. Because you can be taken off the path GPS just like that. Lost. So you have to be very careful uh, when you start um, your salvation walk, your walk through Christ. Because people can come in and pull you from what you're destined to be. And I think it's extremely important that we understand that and understand that being in the Word and feeding your spirit is so important. So that way you can do the works that God has made you for. As we said before, you are God's handiwork. So our Savior breaks it down for us, literally. Say, deny yourself. Take up your cross daily. So the cross being an absolute surrender. What did Jesus do with his cross? He, he was surrendered and died on the cross for our sins. So if we're picking up our cross, we're surrendering to Jesus, surrendering to God and His promise, in willing to die in order to follow Him. That's huge. That's a, that, You go onto the street and ask somebody to die for you right there and then, they're going to say no. So how do we get these people to understand? Well, if we're picking up our cross, if we're doing our works through the through our faith, showing our faith through our work, sorry, other people will see that, and they will grow off that. Now, if you remember earlier, I said that church isn't really a huge thing nowadays, because the young people see church as hate. Now, if we're allowing these young people to come in and learn from us, and we are a representation of God's light, and we're allowing that to show through us, don't you think that they want a piece of that too? Like, wow, this guy... I mean, look at Paul, for instance. I mean, look at all the things that the um, disciples went through. And they were still able to say, you know, my God is greater, even though I may have a thorn in my flesh. So, being able to have absolute surrender and willing to die in order to follow Christ. Sometimes picking up your cross looks like denying your own selfish desires, denying your flesh reading your Bible, continuing a Bible study for which he designated you to do. Now, I put that one in there. It's pretty specific, a Bible study. A little weird, right? That's what I'm struggling with. Because I had it laid on my heart that I should start a Bible study, and I'm not doing the necessary things to do that. How are these people going to learn if no one is going to take up their cross? I'm faltering. But I pray to God that I'll pick up that cross and continue to do what He is requiring of me. I'm not going to let my outward circumstances affect what I believe Christ has done. And what we believe as a body of Christ has done. So when I say Bible study, there's been a Bible study that uh, I had spoke with the Archbishop Jan about and he has requested that I come to a Bible study. Well, the Monday before was a 4th of July party thing, and we weren't able to go. This last Monday, I was uh, received a restaurant excellence visit for my, uh, my store. And it just so happened to take place right when that Bible study started. I feel like it may be an attack. I feel like these things are pulling me back so I don't learn what God's trying to tell me. But, the thing about it is, is, time isn't run out. I have time to, okay, well, I can't make it to that Bible study. I'm going to focus on God when I get out of work. Because I can have a Bible study by myself, you know. But, maybe some of us don't like to read. I'm dyslexic. I find it extremely hard to read. But, I do not allow that circumstance to pull me back from what God has for me. So, reading your Bible or continuing a Bible study, I put that in there for me. Because I need to understand what God is calling me to do. Our burdens shouldn't hold us back from a relationship with Him as we share the yoke. 
because he actually asks us to take his yoke because his yoke is easy. So if you lay your troubles on him as he loves us and does not wish us to be burdened. That's in Matthew 12, 1 through 13. Christianity as a title isn't a call to a program or a job. It's a call to a lifestyle relationship with Jesus. Relationships take deeds and works of dedication to the loved one to maintain a healthy relationship, does it not? If I were to call you, and or no, excuse me, if I was to not call you, not ask you how you're doing, not visit, not any of that, are we gonna have a good relationship? But if I'm sitting there and I'm calling you, I'm visiting you, I'm asking you out for coffee, and I'm applying myself, it sounds like we're gonna have a great relationship. It sounds like we're gonna have some good coffee. I love coffee, if you can't tell. So don't, and, and this is where it kind of wraps in with that too, is if you don't ignore your grandparents, then have a good relationship with them, they're gonna feel like you don't want anything to do with them. So why would they push for you? It's the same thing with Jesus. If you're not going to have a relationship with him, you're not gonna call on him when your tires flat or your brakes go out or your alternator dies, then why, why would he why would he try? Because if you're not trying, if you're not what do I do? If you're not trying to have a relationship with Christ, then he's wasted breath. He's wasting breath on you because you're not listening. Open your ears. Open your heart. Because Christ's always calling. There's never a time that he's not. And he's always talking to you. Whether it's a little, little whisper. Or it's when you're sitting at home praying about what you're going to write about. So what's it mean? How providing rest can grow that relationship. Well, this is huge. Because when you allow yourself time to rest, you're allowing time to grow. If I work 50 hours a week, which I do, and then I do the ministry, and then I start adding other stuff on top of that, I want to go do a charity or do this and that, and I'm filling my week up with everything else but God's Word, and I'm just doing work, how am I supposed to grow in Christ? How am I supposed to learn about Him so I can tell people about Him? That doesn't make any sense to me. If I want to learn about God, I'm going to take a break. Okay? Not literally. <laughs> Not literally. Figuratively, right now. <laughs> I'm going to take a break so I can understand what he's trying to tell me. So, if you're also putting faith and trust into Jesus for what he told us to do, just be obedient. That's a big thing. Be obedient. You want to listen to him. He's our father. You know, if you want a relationship with your father, you listen. If we take time to grow and read our Bible, or that's not supposed to be in there. If we take time to read our Bibles and grow and actually study His Word, we have moments of trust and epiphanies, which really stuck out to me when I was stuck in my car two hours away from where I needed to be. And I'm telling you right now, this, I didn't even see this earlier. <laughs> this part of the sermon, I don't remember writing, and it's for me, and it's for you. And how amazing it is to say, God's putting it there. If you trust, you'll have epiphanies of Scripture you didn't understand prior. How awesome is that? God's always working for you. Always. And I was able to sit there and say, thank you, God, even though this really stinks right now, you are in control. No matter what it is, you are in control. I call it maturing on Christ. Maturing in Christ, excuse me. If you're spending all your time talking during a conversation, can you expect to hear from the other person? No? <laughs> no? So if I'm going to sit there and say, oh, God, I want a brand new Lamborghini. God, I want this. I want a brand new house. I want a jet. Am I asking him to speak back to me? Sounds like I'm just saying, I want, I want, I want. God, give me a humble heart. Allow me to understand what you're trying to tell me. Use your words in the Bible to tell me what it is I need to hear. Sounds more like a prayer that we should be saying. 
and then stopping and listening. Because I'm a hard head. I don't like to listen. I need to stop and say, God, tell me. That's huge. Especially for me. This is, I think this is becoming more about me in this <laughs> as I'm reading it. And I'm kind of like, man, becoming vulnerable. That's huge too. You can't expect to come to the cross, sit in front of Jesus on the cross and say, here I am. I'm going to do all this. I know you're up there and you did this for me, but I'm going to do this. No. Being vulnerable in a situation like that, where this is your Savior, and this is what I've done for you, come to me and have rest. It's, it's huge. If you're spending all your time talking during a conversation, you cannot expect to hear from the other person. It's not necessarily, you have to allow them to speak to you. Okay. So that leads us into an event from a moment in history he's calling us to serve. However, he's telling us we cannot do this ourselves and provides him taking that burden of the yoke. He does it for us. Well, that sounds like a really easy cheat code. Eh, not really. Because, yes, we, we involve ourselves in him and we take the joy in the accomplishment of the labor, but we have to produce fruit. Okay? We have to have those deeds and show the faith. Rebuking your old self which we just talked about earlier, dying to yourself, carrying your cross, so that being reborn in Christ can burst the fruits. And I liked that better than the word I was going to say before, because bursting the fruits to the people. You want to share that? Grow disciples. You can't do that if you're not bearing fruit. Bearing fruit involves reading your Bible, getting close to Christ. Fruits of the labor will be given to those are given to others as you progress. So you can share those fruits with others. Sometimes we don't see those fruits as we spoke before. But as we spoke before, the fruits sometimes will be revealed to you through those you've helped. Even if you've never seen them. And I thank God for that because He is seeing it all and He's placing it in everybody's hearts and you know that it's happening because it's happening, right? You can see that God's actually working and then afterwards you're like, wow, I had no idea. And it's just so awesome to see God working in those ways because you are His handiwork. We serve in the strength He provides. It's not of my own doing. He gives us the strength. This design was tailored for us and designed to help us strive to make us like Him. That's some pretty big shoes to fill, but I will say that I want to be as much like Jesus as I can. Because Christ promised His yoke is easy, He will be there always when you call. That's Isaiah 41.10. And this leads to better judgment, relationships, trust, love through Him, we all want the blessings, but we aren't willing to pick up our cross. Pick up your cross daily to receive those blessings and be a part of God's kingdom. That's huge. I say that a lot. Wow. <laughs> the crucifixion of the Messiah. This is seen as either the saddest time in history or the most amazing time in history. Yes, it was awful for what Jesus had to go through, but it was necessary. The moment of retribution for our sins has come, and Christ had died on the cross only to have resurrected on the third day. I could not have wrote this without bringing this up, because it should be rejoiced over mourned, and more people need to hear it, and more need, people need to hear it, and more people need to hear it. How did I stumble over that? I said it three times. <laughs> so, however, we should mourn for those that don't believe and die. We should mourn for them because their eternity is everlasting and they have not decided to give to Christ. Even on the crosses, one of the criminals hurled insults at him. How do you do that? He's doing it for you. 
How do you not accept that? Even on the cross, even on the cross, he had love and said, you will, remember, you will be remembered in my kingdom. As long as there is breath in your lungs, you can confess and you can repent. And it is so important that we remember this and pick up our cross daily so that way we can have a better relationship with him, but also have a better relationship with our brothers and sisters. Because there's a lot of hate in this world right now, and everybody hates everybody. We're supposed to be the light and show the love that Christ gave us for others and for us. So in conclusion, there's always a good time to share Christ. There's always a good time to share the blessings and the gifts and the wonderful things that He has done for us. And I thank God every day that He didn't give up on us like some of those other gods that you read about. And I'm glad they aren't real. And there's only one true God. And that's what I got for you. Thank you.